Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor Fun. And today I want to show you a dream that I had on March 14th, 2024. And I'm going to read it to you. Then I'm going to give you my interpretation of it. It states, the dream begins and the atmosphere in the dream is dark and shadowy. I am looking at a small rectangular plastic container. I open it and it contains contraceptive birth control pills. Two or three women asked if I could borrow, use my pills. I said it was fine. I agreed. There was a scene change. I was inside of a small town police station. There were two men in the office. They looked to be in their early 40s. I was younger in the dream. They were talking to me about an unsolved investigative case. They asked my opinion about it. I gave them my impression on how to solve it. I really don't remember the words that were spoken regarding the unsolved case. Suddenly, an African-American woman entered the small office. I felt drawn to her. She was going to be my assistant. I told the men that even though I didn't know her very long, I felt a deep bond with her. Both men looked disapproving of me. As I hugged the black lady, she seemed younger than me. I think I was training her. The man said they were going to leave since it was... That should read 2 o'clock p.m. on a Friday. They wanted to get an early start on the weekend. I felt as if they were heading out to have some drinks at a bar, so they left. I told them it was all right, and I had everything under control. There was a scene change. We were still in the small town police station, but it seemed as if we were in the administrative room. There were three other women, myself and the younger black intern. They were talking about their plans for the weekend. The one lady stated she would definitely be going to church on Sunday. One of the other women said she didn't think she would be going to church. I noticed it seemed very warm. I got the impression that we were in a southern state of the United States. All of us women were wearing summer dresses, or what is also known as sun dresses. The other women's dresses had a white background with a brightly colored floral design pattern on them. I looked at my dress. It also had a white background, except there weren't flowers, but honeybees flying all on it. Yellow and golden colored bees with a black outline around their bodies. All of a sudden, I heard the wind picking up outside. There was a big picture window in the administrative office. I looked out of the window and I saw a whirlwind like a small tornado. I think they're called dust devils. As I was peering out the window, the elongated gray fa face of an alien being with large almond-shaped eyes slammed into it. It startled me and I awoke at 8.20 a.m. Okay, so let me go through the stream and what I take from it. Okay, the beginning, it says the dream begins, is dark and shadowy. I'm looking at a small rectangular plastic container. I opened it. It contains contraceptive the birth control pills. Two or three women, and I couldn't tell if they were women or if they were younger than women, like if they were adolescents, because like I said, it was dark and shadowy. They asked if, if I could borrow or use my pills. I said it was fine. Okay, this, I believe, was confirmed from a new law that was put into place in Texas about adolescents, minors, Girls under the age of 18 had to get permission to be able to receive contraceptives according to the state law, but the federal law 
which is where these some of these clinics, these family planning clinics are run by the federal law and they override the state law because they are funded federally. But I did find an article about that. Let me show that to you. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals says that Texas law requiring minors to get parental consent for birth control does not conflict with Title X. That's a policy that allows teens to get contraception confidentially at federally funded family planning clinics. Until the Fifth Circuit's rulings, those clinics were exempt from requiring parental permission. Okay, let me show you the date of this video. March 13th, 2024. Okay, the next section of the dream, it says there was a scene change. I was inside of a small town police station. There were two men in the office. They looked to be in their early 40s. Okay, I think about the police station and it was like I was an investigator and I think what that means is that I am investigating about when Jesus will return to take home his bride. I think that's what that means. It says they were talking to me about an unsolved investigative case. They asked my opinion about it. I gave them my impression on how to solve it. And I, that's what I believe I'm doing with my ministry as well and in, as well in prophetic dream interpretation okay now with the african-american woman i'm not quite sure what the meaning could be for this unless since i believe the dream took place in a southern state which could be texas especially since it had a reference to the birth control pills but African-Americans were enslaved in the South. So I think that could be one understanding of it. Or it could be just the simple fact of racist attitudes in the South. I don't know. Okay, now down further it says here, It says, both men look disapproving of me. So that's why I get the impression that it could be the, their racist attitudes towards African Americans. I don't know. It says, the men said they were going to leave since it was, that should read, 2 o'clock p.m. on Friday. They wanted to get an early start on the weekend. I feel as if they were heading out to have some drinks at a bar. So they left. I told them it was all right. I had everything under control. So I don't know if this is in reference to people who are still in the world that aren't realizing the times in which we are living. But two o'clock also made me think about the time when Jesus was crucified on the cross. And I'd like to read an excerpt from the book of Matthew chapter 27 and this is from the King James version of the Bible Matthew 27 verses 45 through 54 it reads now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour and the sixth hour they start their day at 6 a.m. I, I read up on this to the ninth hour. So the sixth hour would have been 12 noon. Okay, now verse 46 reads, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, this is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Okay, so I did look at the reference of time and how time is explained in the Bible. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 verses 4 through 9 reads, And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men can count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but, all, but that all should come to repentance. And then 10 reads, but the day of the Lord Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are thereon shall be burned up. Okay, that was verse 10. So I also found information on Wikipedia about Jesus's death and crucifixion. Crucifixion of Jesus. The crucifixion of Jesus was the execution by crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth in first century Judea, most likely A.D. 30 or A.D. 33. It is described in the four canonical gospels referred to in the New Testament epistles attested to by other ancient sources and is broadly accepted as one of the events most likely to have occurred during his life. There is no consensus among historians on the details. Okay, under chronology, it says in the purple, scholars have provided estimates in the range from 30 to 33 AD with Rainer Reisner stating that the 14th of Nisan, or April 7th, of the year 30 AD is apparently, in the opinion of the majority of contemporary scholars, as well far and away the most likely date of the crucifixion of Jesus. So I was thinking about this, and a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So it's like 2,000 years, and if 30 was the year that he died, if you subtract the years of the Great Tribulation, it takes you to 2024. Back to the dream, it says, We were still in the small town police station, but it seemed as if we were in the administrative room. There were three other women, myself and the younger black intern. 
They were talking about their plans for the weekend. The one lady stated she would definitely be going to church on Sunday. One of the other women said she didn't think she would be going to church. Okay, so there's the two groups. I believe the people that are ready to go and the people that are not ready as of yet. Okay, then it talks about what we were wearing. All of us women were wearing summer dresses or what is also known as sun dresses. And I was thinking about sun, the son of man, Jesus Christ. The other women had white with the floral design, which I believe represents the white represents heaven and floor, the floral design would be like paradise. I believe that's heaven getting ready to be caught away up to heaven, New Jerusalem. And my dress was interesting because it was white. Except there weren't flowers, but honeybees flying all on it. Yellow, yellow, excuse me, and golden colored bees with a black outline around their bodies. Okay, so I did find information about bees in reference to the Bible. Let me show you. This article is entitled The Spiritual Importance of Honeybees by Kaylin Kopisch. And it's taken from guidepost.org. It says honeybees are an integral part of our natural world. They pollinate the majority of our crops and trees, giving us the food we eat and the air we breathe. But bees also hold a spiritual significance for humanity. They are present in religious life from the Bible to monasteries. What is it about these tiny insects that connects them to the divine honeybees are an integral part of our natural world they pollinate the majority of our crops and trees giving us the food we eat and the air we breathe but bees also hold a spiritual significance for humanity they are present in religious life from the bible to monasteries what is it about these tiny insects that connects them to the divine in the purple it says bees in the bible Bees are mentioned multiple times in the Bible. Bees in a swarm are often viewed as a prophetic occurrence in the story of Samson. Bees appear in the carcass of a lion he kills, symbolizing a victorious triumph over evil. In the book of Judges, Deborah was a prophetess who spoke the words of God. Deborah's Jewish name, Deborah, translates to bee. Honey in the Bible. Honey is referenced in the Bible over 60 times and is usually synonymous with purity and abundance. In the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 17, describes the promised land for the Israelites as a land flowing with milk and honey. Proverbs 24, verse 13 states, Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus appears to his disciples after the resurrection, they give him a piece of fish and a honeycomb to eat. So there's the reference to the honeybees. The next part of the dream, it says, all of a sudden I heard the wind picking up outside. There was a big picture window in the administrative office. I looked out of the window and I saw a whirlwind like a small tornado. I think they're called dust devils. Okay, so dust devils, devils are coming. As I was peering out the window, the elongated gray face of an alien being with large almond-shaped eyes slammed into it. It startled me, and I awoke at 8.20 a.m. Okay, so let me take you to the scripture that I found about the delusion It is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. I will start at 3. And this is the King James Version Bible. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that 
man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that what, excuse me, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all powers all power excuse me and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Okay, the lie would be the alien. So after we are raptured and caught away, they will say that we were abducted by aliens. As I was peering out the window, the elongated gray face of an alien being with large almond-shaped eyes slammed into it. It startled me, and I awoke at 8.20 a.m. 8.20 in the Strong's Hebrew Concordance is Ashmanim, definition, perhaps stout, It says down where the words Brown Driver Briggs it says apparently. And then it gives you two Bible scriptures, Isaiah 59, 10. It says, perhaps we are among the stout, like dead men. And then it says under Hosea, be desolate. Okay, so for 59, 10. It's entitled, Sin Separates Us from God. This is Isaiah 59, 10. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night we are in desolate places as dead men. There's a reference to noonday again when Jesus was dying on the cross. And Hosea, fourteen one. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. So I believe that this is all a warning that these are all time markers and what's about to occur with the birth control pills and that law that was passed in Texas about needing permission to get on birth control or have access to contraception if you're a minor in the state of Texas. I just believe that all of these things are time markers as well as the looking out the window and seeing the dust devil. There were a lot of tornado, tornadic activity last night. I'm recording this on March 15th and on March 14th. I don't know if you were aware if you live in the area in the Midwest. I know there was a lot of tornadoes in Ohio as far down as Texas. So please, if you don't know who your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, please come back to him right away. I believe his return will be very soon. And if you don't know who he is, you will be left behind to be tempted by the enemy. 
and may God bless you.